Hi everyone! So unfortunately, in recent videos, we have been looking at quite a lot of rotted roots, so I figured perhaps this was a good time for me to do a full Root Rot 101 type video for you guys. So that's what we're going to be covering today. We're going to be looking at the different types of root rot, what causes root rot, the symptoms of root rot, how to get rid of the root rot, and how to prevent it from coming back again or prevent ever getting it in the first place. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And the first thing I want to bring up is the fact that a lot of people mistakenly think that root rot is caused by overwatering itself. That is not actually the case. Overwatering can lead to root rot, but it is not actually the cause. So first of all, when we talk about roots rotting, what we're talking about is necrosis of the roots. So the roots have started to die off for some reason. And the number one reason that roots start to die off and become susceptible to being rotted is due to lack of oxygen. So basically the roots get suffocated, it causes damage to the roots, and now the roots are more susceptible to the pathogens that actually cause the rot that you see when roots start to rot. And those pathogens can be bacterial or they can be fungal. And honestly, you guys, the pathogens that we're gonna be talking about today, they exist all the time, like everywhere around us. I mean, there's bacteria on surfaces all throughout your house and there's bacteria on your plants. Now, the thing is, it doesn't become a problem until, like I said, the roots get damaged in some form or fashion. So, Let's talk about the two types of root rot. And honestly, you guys, when I was researching for this video, I, maybe these are just terms I'm using. I've heard other YouTubers use them as well though, but it's not like a, really a scientific term, I guess, because you've heard me say that I've dry rotted some of my plants roots before. Dry rot is actually something that happens to wood. It's kind of a completely different thing than what we're gonna be talking about today, but I do wanna make a distinct, distinction for you guys between what I'm going to refer to as wet rot and dry rot. So basically what I'm talking about when I say wet rot versus dry rot is root rot that happens because of things that occur from you overwatering versus root rot that happens because of things that occur because you drastically underwatered a plant. So let's go ahead and talk about the overwatering situation first since that's the one that's more common for most people. And so basically what happens when you overwater a plant, you know what, let's take it uh, one step further back. Overwatering a plant can happen due to several different things, and I'm gonna cover those things a little bit more in detail when we get into the how to prevent root rot phase. But basically, when you're watering your plant too frequently, and I mean frequently by you watered it yesterday, like thoroughly watered it, I don't care how much you put in it at any given watering, like you could have dumped a gallon of water in your plant yesterday, it's fine, that's not overwatering. You poured your water into your plant yesterday, and then two days from now, you go and you do the same thing again, and the soil hadn't dried out at all. That's what I mean by overwatering. So, what happens in that situation is that the roots basically are staying too wet, too long, and they're getting suffocated because they aren't being allowed to dry out enough to be able to get the amount of oxygen they need to survive. So, they start to decay, they start to kind of die off. And really what's happening is it's the very outer layer of the root that is dying off. And basically it's kind of like if your skin, if you got a cut on your skin, your skin was protecting everything under there from bacteria and pathogens around you. Well, now they have a way to get in and cause problems. That's what happens with the roots in that situation. That outer layer gets messed up now all the pathogens can get in there. And unfortunately, these pathogens, they thrive in moist environments. They have to have a wet environment to be able to really take hold and start to take over your plant, starting with its roots. So that's what's happening when we overwater. Now, when you underwater, you can also have root rot. And it happens, though, in a kind of slightly different way. And so basically when you underwater a plant, normally if you just underwater it a little, or if it's like plants that we say to let dry all the way out, if you let them dry out, even if you go like one day after it's dried all the way out, normally those types of plants are okay. But let's say you just, I don't know, went on vacation and maybe your flight got canceled and you couldn't get another flight out for two days or something and you come back home and this plant really needed to be watered two days before you got back. At that point, the roots possibly have become desiccated enough to the point that they will not rehydrate. 
And so what happens is those roots have shriveled up, they've dried up, and now you go and you water that plant and it's now sitting in water because the roots are unable to take up the water. So they're just sitting there getting soaked, being in that environment that is excellent for pathogens to start to take over. And because they can't rehydrate, they start to rot. And also because they can't rehydrate, now that soil is gonna stay wet for a longer time than it normally does. And so that's what we mean when we say dry rot, or I guess I should say that's what I mean when I say dry rot, because I don't know, once again, that everybody necessarily uses that term. But basically when I told you guys that I recently accidentally dry rotted a lot of my imported plants, that's what happened. I just went way too long in between watering them to the point that when I did water them again, the roots were too desiccated to be able to reabsorb the water, and then everything was just sitting there moist and those pathogens started to take over. And we are gonna cover what to do in that situation to help save the plant here in a bit. But before we move on to anything else, there is something I never hear anybody talk about, and that is the fact that you can have roots die off in the soil and not have a rot problem. Think about it, you guys. In the wild, roots underground, they are not going to always stay healthy, happy, whatever. Things happen, bugs eat them, whatever. The whole plant doesn't just become susceptible to rot and die off. Now, in the wild, there are things in the soil that help counteract the pathogens we're talking about and keep everything in balance. So that definitely helps. But roots can just naturally die off and not cause a problem. And a lot of what we're gonna cover in the prevention section of this video is what allows for that process to happen without it becoming root rot. But I did wanna show you an example real quick. So this is one of the imported plants from not the last order, maybe not even the second to last order. It might've been three orders ago. Eh, maybe it was the second to last order, but this is a philodendron sodoroid. And I just wanted to show you because there are some rotted, not rotted, dead roots, excuse me. They're just dead, they're not rotted. You will be able to hopefully see them when I hold them up to the camera and see that they obviously are not alive. They are not white, they are not pink. Sodoroids do get pink roots, but I do have healthy roots pushing around in here because this plant is alive and happy and growing. So first of all, right here, if you can see that red root right there, that is new root growth that has been happening. This is in the last week or so, I've started to see these new roots spreading to the edge of the pot. However, over here, and I really hope you guys can see it even though there's a little bit of a glare, and of course if the camera will focus, you see over here, there's some darker roots and they have completely died off in that soil. However, the plant is not unhappy, it is not unhealthy. There is not an actual rot situation happening in here. If there was, these new roots would be affected. They wouldn't still be growing around in here and the plant would just not be doing well. So it is possible to just have root loss and not have root rot. Keep that in mind, once again, we'll touch on this some more when we get to the prevention section of the video. But the next thing I wanna talk about are the symptoms of root rot that you may see. Now, I wanna caution you first of all that all of the symptoms that we're gonna talk about above the soil line, everything I'm gonna mention can also be caused by other things. I do have a video all about leaf issues on plants and what all it could mean. I'll link that down in the description below for you. So don't always just jump to the conclusion if you see what I'm about to tell you, that it's root rot. It could be any number of things. But the signs you're potentially going to see above the soil include yellowing of the leaves. You could also get black spotting on your leaves. You can get wilting at a certain point. If you have any kind of mushy looking stems, that's a big one. Stunted growth is another one or just slow growth in general. And then if you happen to notice that your soil just seems to be staying really wet, that is another good indicator that something might be going on. Now, when you do see that, and let's say you've gone through all the other things in that video I just mentioned that it could be, and you've kind of ruled it out, or even if you think you've ruled it out, but you're still worried it might be root rot, the next thing you're gonna have to do is check below the soil line. This is one reason that I really, really encourage the use of clear containers, you guys, because you can always just look and see if the roots are looking like maybe something's wrong without having to guess or take the plant out of its pot. But if you don't have it in a clear pot, that's okay. The next step you're gonna to wanna to take is to very gently take that plant out of its pot and check the roots. 
Now, if we are talking about plants with white roots, because as you just saw, some plants do have red roots, but if we're talking about plants that have white roots, if you are growing your plants in a soilless substrate, so for example, LECA or PON, in those situations, because there is no soil, those roots are not going to potentially get stained and that is going to affect the color. So in that kind of situation, your roots should be looking white to kind of a beige color and that's it. If they are starting to look any darker than that on a white root plant in a soilless substrate, I would start to question if perhaps you don't have some rot going on. Now, if your roots are reddish or pinkish, you're just looking for the shade of the pink or red to look less vibrant and start to look darker. Now, as you saw here, and I don't know how well y'all are gonna see it on camera, this is pretty bright, but I will also try and kind of put in some footage here of my Philodendron Red Anderson because it's really red, it's really obvious. So hopefully you'll understand what I'm getting here. It should look pretty vibrant, and this is in a soil substrate and I find that they don't really get that stained, the red and pink roots in a soil substrate. So you're still looking for that vibrant color. If it starts to look darker and moving towards more of a almost blackish color, that would be a good indicator that something is going wrong. And that goes for if you're in LECA, PON, or a soil-based substrate for red and pink roots. Now, if you are in a soil-based substrate for a plant that has white roots, it is possible that your roots can get stained and then they will look darker. However, and this is gonna be subjective, you guys, because my opinion on what constitutes medium brown versus dark brown could be completely different than somebody else's opinion on what constitutes medium brown versus dark brown. But I'm just gonna say in general, you don't wanna see them getting any darker than a medium brown. If they are really, really dark, and definitely if they're starting to look black, that's a good indicator that something has gone wrong. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is actually touch those roots and see if they feel mushy. If they feel mushy or they just like fall apart at your touch, definitely you have a root rot situation. Now, like I said before, root rot, basically the outer layer of the root gets damaged, then it can get infected and it basically just destroys all of the root tissue until you're left with this inner filament is the best way I can describe it. Basically, it looks just like a thin thread. So when you go to pull on a rotted root, it will typically slide off and you will just have this tiny little thread left in the middle. If you are seeing that, or even if as you took it out of its pot, it could have pulled some of that off. So if you just see like an end of a root just looks like it has a tiny thread on it, that means there was rot somewhere that got pulled off when you were taking the plant out of the pot. That is definitely a sign that you have root rot. Now I do wanna caution you that sometimes I have seen roots go kind of transparent. They haven't necessarily gotten really dark brown or like black looking, but they just look translucent, like clearer, like I can see through them a bit more. And in those situations, when I've gone to touch them, they're mushy and they've fallen off. I have seen this most often on Anthurium. That is probably the number one plant that I have seen this on. But just because I've only seen it on an Anthurium does not mean that it cannot happen on other plants. So it's always, in my opinion, a good idea to kind of just feel around on the roots regardless, even if things don't look super dark, because you also could just be catching it at an early stage and they just haven't gotten dark yet. And the only way you're gonna know that for sure is to kind of feel in those roots and see if they feel mushy. Now, another thing is smell. Lots of times you will know real quick if your roots are rotted because they put off a horrible odor as evident by my reaction in our last video. Okay, you guys, uh, oh, I am opening the second Monstera Albo. Wow. That smell is horrible. This is the worst smell out of anything I've opened so far in here. Oh my God. It stinks. Now, honestly, you guys, your roots have to be pretty far gone and pretty far rotted for the odor to be that bad in my experience. So the, for example, the plants that I dry rotted, they had a slightly bad odor, but it was nowhere near what was coming off some of those plants in that last unboxing video that I did. That was by far the worst I have ever smelled it. And I have had plants where I have had a little bit of root rot starting, but I've caught it, caught it early enough that there was not really any odor. So just because you don't smell something bad 
doesn't mean that you don't have like a start of a root rot situation going on. So just keep that in mind. So next thing I wanna talk about is how to treat for root rot when it happens. But real quick, one thing, cause I know some people are probably wondering this, can root rot spread from plant to plant? Theo has come to say hi, you guys. So we just let him say hi real quick and then we'll hop back into it. I think he really just wants to snuggle right now, but I won't be too much longer. It's not gonna be as long as the last video, I promise. Okay. Okay, so back to the question of can root rot spread from plant to plant? So once again, the pathogens that infect the roots and cause the issue, they can spread from plant to plant, but once again, like I said, they're kind of already on your plants anyway, but it is possible if for some reason there's a plant that doesn't have them for them to spread, they can spread via spores. They also can spread via insects and the number one spreader of that kind of thing is going to be fungus gnats. However, once again, conditions have to be just right for those pathogens to be able to enter the roots. Actually, let's take that back one step. Conditions have to be just right for the roots to suffer damage that then allows those pathogens to get into the roots. And there also have to be perfect conditions for those pathogens to survive and thrive. So if we aren't creating those conditions, then it won't be an issue. And once again, we are gonna cover what those conditions are when we get to the prevention part of the video. But next, let's talk real quick about treatment for root rot. And I wanna talk about this kind of separately in terms of if you dry rotted them versus if you wet rotted them versus if we've got import plants that we received that had rot when we received them. So since overwatering is the number one thing that kind of leads to root rot for most people, let's talk about that situation first. So let's say you saw signs up above the soil that your plant might have root rot. You slipped it out of its pot, it does have root rot. So what do we do next? The first thing you need to do is if you are using a soilless substrate, or I guess it doesn't matter, any substrate whatsoever, you need to remove all the substrate from those roots. Now, obviously if you're using Leca or Pond, that is gonna be easier than if you're in a soil-based medium. If you are in a soil-based medium, best way that I have found to do it is either if you have like, the ability to take it outside with a garden hose, just kind of run that water over it and gently kind of mess with those roots lightly with your fingers to get it all off. Or you could fill up like a bucket of water and kind of swish it around in there until you get all of that soil off. But you need to remove all of the soil because the soil is what is harboring those pathogens now. So it's gotta go bye-bye. Now, as far as reusing that soil goes, we will get to that in a second, but you do not want to reuse it without sterilizing it because that is the only other way that you can potentially spread it from plant to plant. Once again, assuming that you give it the right conditions for it to thrive and take over if you were to reuse it. So once you get all of that substrate off, you're going to want to remove all of the rotted roots. Now, what we don't want to do is remove all of the roots if we don't have to. So when I say remove all of the rotted roots, you're gonna to need to feel around, find where those rotted spots are, take a clean pair of snips or scissors or a knife or whatever you have to cut with, and you're going to want to cut at least half an inch above where you see the start of the rot. We wanna do that just to make sure that we're in healthy root, that we're not too close and maybe the root looks okay, but the rot had already started to take hold there. So at least half an inch. If you wanna to go to a full inch, that's fine, but we just wanna make sure that we are definitely into healthy root. This is also a good time for me to point out that root rot does not only affect the ends of the roots. Now, typically you're going to see it at the end first, but make sure you're traveling that root all the way up because I have seen it hundreds of times now with importing plants where this part of the bottom of the root is completely rotted and then this section right above it is healthy, but then up here, there's another little half inch section of rot. So you need to make sure you cut up above the highest point of that rot and a little bit higher, half an inch to an inch above that. Also worth mentioning right now, in general, when you remove all the substrate from your plants, any part of the stem that was below the soil level, check it. If it looks yellow, brown, black, if it feels mushy, you're going to need to remove that part of the plant as well. And if that means that you're removing all of the roots because they're all growing from below that point, then that's gonna be what I also refer to as a complete restart in water, which basically means you, you're kind of just propagating the plant. So you're just gonna cut all of that off and hopefully it's not to the point where it spreads so far up your stem that you don't have a viable node, which 
We saw an example of that in the last video. One of the philodendron red Andersons that I had received, its stem was mush. It did end up separating the day after I recorded that video. There's no viable node anymore on that plant. That plant is done for, it is a goner. So in that situation, unfortunately, you will have lost the plant, but most of the time, if you're catching it early enough, even if you have to cut part of the lower part of that stem off, you will still have viable a node above that. You just pop it into water, treat it like propagation. Once you've removed all of those rotted roots, there are several things you need to decide. So depending on how many roots were removed, you may determine that you have so little root system left, it might be worth it just to pop it into water and treat it like a propagation. If you do choose to do this, you do not need to remove the remaining healthy roots. Just leave them there. New roots will start to develop from the healthy roots. Trust me, it happens. So I would just put it straight into water. If you are doing that, I would not worry about removing any leaves or anything like that. Lots of times if a plant does have a lot of leaves and just a little bit of roots and you stick into water, it's not gonna be able to support all of those leaves, but it's gonna kill them off on its own anyway. So I don't remove leaves personally unless they absolutely have to be removed. Otherwise, just they'll die off, they need to die off, and as they die off, just cut them off. Now, if you do determine that you do have enough roots to pot it back up, and honestly, you guys, this is kind of subjective, but let's say you lost, I'm trying to think what would be the best ratio to give you guys. If you lost more than a third of the roots, you might want to start questioning what you're gonna do. If you lost more than three quarters of the roots, I would probably go ahead and stick it in water personally, especially if the amount of root you have left compared to the amount of foliage on the plant is drastically off now. That's when I would put it in water. If it's not that drastically off, I would probably go ahead and take it straight back into whatever substrate you're using. Now, when you do that, there is a treatment you're gonna wanna give those roots to make sure you've killed off all of the bad bacterial or fungal things that are going on. That is a standard root rot treatment that so many people use. Now, there are different ratios that you can use for this. I personally use a treatment that is two parts water to one part hydrogen peroxide. The hydrogen peroxide I use is a 3% hydrogen peroxide. I find that two to one has always worked fine for me. I do know some people who use a one to one ratio. So one part water to one part 3% hydrogen peroxide. It's up to you. The two to one has always worked for me and then I don't have to use as much hydrogen peroxide and a bottle lasts me longer. So as long as it's working for me, that's what I'm gonna to continue to do. Now you don't need to like let the roots sit in this mixture for a long period of time. You basically just need to give it a nice little swish down in there and then you'll be good to go. Now, as I mentioned before, you do not wanna reuse the soil that you, or the substrate, whatever substrate you just used. You do not wanna reuse that when you're potting it back up unless you have had a chance to sterilize it. And I am going to be releasing an upcoming video here sometime in the next month on how to sterilize soil in your own home. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you click that subscribe button and that notification bell if you don't wanna miss that one. But if you have determined that you have enough roots to repot it, you've given it its treatment and you're going into nice clean substrate, another thing that a lot of people don't always think about is do you need to downsize your pot? So once again, if you lost a significant number of roots, let's say you were in a six inch pot and you had to cut off half of the roots, maybe yeah, even, even a third of the roots could be to the point where now a six inch pot is really too big for the amount of root that you have left, you will need to take it down to a smaller pot. My rule of thumb, you guys, I want it to be almost root bound when I am treating root rot. If I'm potting it back up, I would rather pot it up in a pot that it barely fits in and have to repot it in a couple of months than to put it in a bigger pot because the roots are already stressed out. They're already going through all the shock of you of being rotted, then you having to cut them off, you treating them and repotting up and all of that. I find that if you put them in a vessel that is almost too small for them, they tend to recover quicker and you tend to be less likely to have a relapse, if you will. Now, after you have done that, you're basically going into prevention mode from that point on. You want to prevent doing the things that led to the root rot in the first place. And we are going to get to that in a second. I sound like a broken record, but we're getting to it. All right, so let's talk about if you dry rotted your plants. So you went way too long in between watering, the roots got way too desiccated, shriveled and dried up, and they could not rehydrate. 
and they have started to rot. In this situation, you typically will find that you are having to remove all of the roots. Now, there are exceptions to this. The thicker rooted the plant is, the more likely it is that the upper part of the root maybe hadn't dried out too, too far. It was just the lower part of the root. But in finer root plants, typically when you get to that phase, all the roots are shot. So this is, for example, a relatively fine root plant. I did have some other sauteroys. This one, by some miracle, survived all of my dry rot. Well, it was in a bigger, bigger pot than the ones that got dry rotted. Most of the stuff that I dry rotted were in three inch or two inch pots. And obviously those dry out more quickly. So that's how this guy probably survived. But the ones that didn't survive that whole incident, basically I had to remove all of the roots because they have super fine roots and they were all completely toast. So when you hear me say I restart plants in water because of that, that's what I'm talking about. So in that situation, I did have to remove every single root off of that plant. If it is a thicker root, plant and you discover that there is still some healthy root at the top, you're going to treat it like you would in the wet rot situation. Just remove everything that's rotted, leave the healthy stuff there, but nine times out of ten you're going to have removed most of the roots in a dry rot situation even if it's a thicker root plant like that. It just seems to be how it happens. So you're still going to want to restart it in water. Case in point, some of the Monstera albos got dry rot in that situation that I had going on and they have been restarting in water. But as you can see, there's old root there and off of those old roots that were not rotted, I left those on there, put it in the water and now there is new root growth growing off of that. I also wanna take a moment to point out that lots of times on these types of plants with the big thick roots like your Monsteras, your Anthuriums, it may feel a little bit squishy, you guys. Like those roots, felt the outer layer of them felt tiny bit soft to me compared to what, for example, the new roots that are coming in on them feel like, but it wasn't rotted. And I know it wasn't rotted because when I was pulling, nothing was happening. So that pull technique, and don't pull too hard, you guys, because you're just gonna rip the roots off. Lightly pulling, if it's mushy and it's sliding off, it's not okay. So for those, I kept cutting up, cutting up and testing how it felt. And if it wasn't sliding off, I then cut another half inch above that and I stopped and I put it into water. And you can see how dark those roots looked. They're not rotted. They are healthy, obviously, and that's how the new roots are coming off of there. But really, I only encounter that on bigger rooted, like thicker rooted plants, but just wanted to point that out. Oh, and before I forget, if you are having to restart a plant that has root rot in water, you are going to want to make sure you are changing that water daily. I find that even if you give it a root rot bath, which by the way, you guys, when it's dry rot like that, I don't always do that. If I'm restarting it in water, I do not always do the root rot bath treatment. You 100% can, it definitely wouldn't hurt. But I find that when we're going back into water and typically I've had to remove so many roots anyway that the odds of anything lingering are not high. However, I do find that that weird white substance that kind of can develop in water on plants when you're water propagating, I find that it happens much more quickly when you have plants that were suffering root rot and you put them into water, even if you give them the root rot treatment, than it does on other plants. And you don't want that lingering in there. It's just gonna slow down the growth of new roots and potentially cause a problem. So just make sure you're changing that water daily. Now, once you've gotten a significant amount of new root growth going on on any of the plants that you had to restart in water, you're just gonna pot them up like you would any propagation and treat them normally from that point forward. Now, back to the wet rot situation. Once you guys have repotted that plant up, depending on how much root you lost versus how much foliage was up above, you will see that the plant can start killing off some leaves as well. However, it might not be a bad idea to prune some of the foliage off when you pot it back up. And here's why. So if there is way more foliage up above now than there is root below, the plant is going to try to support that foliage first and foremost, even if it can't do it. And if it can't do it, once again, leaves will start to die off, but it will focus on those leaves before anything else. So if you do actually prune back the plant when you repot it, you're freeing up some of that energy for it to put into developing new roots and recovering that root system. So if you do want to trim some of the foliage off, by all means you can do so. My recommendation is that you remove equal amount of foliage to the amount of root that you lost, if that makes sense. So if you had to cut like a third of the roots off, then cut a third of the foliage off. No more, no less, and you should be good. 
If it is a plant that is a vining plant like this, and let's say you have multiple vines, because this is obviously just one vine. But for example, like on my Syngonium here, there's a lot of different vines. So in this situation, you could just remove individual leaves, but it might not be a bad idea to actually trim off some vines and go ahead and propagate them just as a backup in case something goes wrong and the rot comes back and it spreads to the stem because now you have a replacement if the original plant doesn't make it. Just my two cents. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about in terms of treatment before we move on to prevention is specifically about imported plants. So when imported plants come in, you guys, lots of times it's not necessarily clear what kind of rot you have because of the way that they are being shipped. So they are typically being wrapped in something, some kind of paper towel or in the Arrowhead Asia orders, I'm pretty sure it's toilet paper, something like that that has been moistened. It's wrapped around those roots and then they are wrapped with saran wrap. Now, saran wrap is wrapped around to keep that from drying out so that you don't have roots that totally shrivel up and die, which would then lead to dry rot if they were in a pot, but they're not. So they're doing that to try to keep those roots moist and from drying out and dying off. However, because you are wrapping saran wrap and you're tightening things around the roots, you are depriving those roots of oxygen. So the longer they are in a box, the more likely it is that they will become susceptible to rot because they are being suffocated and that is causing the outer layer of that root to die off and now it is exposed and able to have bacteria get into it. So because of that, sometimes it can be hard to tell how bad a situation is when you get imported plants in. So that is one of the reasons you always wanna put them into water first for at least 24 hours, then assess the situation, remove any of the rot that you see, and if you're still kind of worried about it, put them back in the water for a little bit and wait and see if it looks like anything's spreading, anything else is popping up anywhere else. I personally find that you can leave them in water without them throwing a huge fit. Cause remember these plants were in soil before the soil was removed and then they were wrapped in that paper towel and wrapped in saran wrapped and shipped to you. So they're already going through a big shock. They're not used to living in water, but I find three days, usually they're okay. Then depending on the plant, I mean, some of the plants they'll be fine for longer than that, but some of them they'll start to drop leaves after that point. So really you wanna try to assess and figure out what's going on within those first three days. Once you've determined that you've gotten all the rot off there, I do highly recommend now, even if it looks like it's all healthy roots, to give them the root rot treatment before you go and pot them up. That is how I handle my imports now. And there have been situations where I have had to remove pretty much all of the roots. And in those situations, I do not pot them up. I just put them in water and restart them in water, just like I described a second ago. That is how I handle it. And that has worked fabulously for me so far. Okay, so you have successfully determined there is something wrong with your plant. You have diagnosed the situation. You have found out that your plant has root rot. You've gone through the treatment process. Everything is back as it should be. The plant has been potted back up into whatever substrate it is that you have. Now you are just worried about how do I prevent this from happening again? Well, first and foremost, before you actually pot that plant back up, I want you to make sure that your substrate makes sense for that plant. Part of the problem with overwatering and it leading to suffocation of the roots and root rot is that oftentimes people do not have the plant in the appropriate type of soil. They don't have anything in there to amend the soil. They've just taken straight potting soil from the store. They haven't added perlite or pumice or anything to aerate that soil better. And so that soil stays waterlogged longer. It also compacts down easier around those roots and that is what suffocates those roots. So always double check if maybe your plant should have been in better soil. Perhaps you had an epiphytic plant such as this philodendron sodaroy. If you were to put this in straight up PD soil from the store, it was not going to do well. This is a plant that is used to growing off of the side of a tree. It is not used to having its roots tightly compacted in wet soil. So this needs a very chunky, airy mix. I do also have a video on all the soil mixes I use and what plants I recommend them for. So I will link that down below for you for reference as well. So if you determine perhaps your soil was not the best and it's okay if you're new to plants, it happens. I used to plant my plants up with not super special soil either until I realized that was not a good idea. And the reason I realized it is because I started having root rot problems. It's okay, it happens. Now we're gonna be able to fix it. 
So if you determine you need a different soil type, make sure you pot it up in the appropriate soil type. A much airier, chunkier mix is usually what you're gonna be going with. Once you know you have done that, that is the biggest key, you guys. That is like step number one in preventing root rot, in my personal opinion, is making sure it is in the right soil type. We already talked about pot size because another thing that oftentimes happens, especially for people who are new into plants, is they buy a plant and they think, well, eventually it's gonna get big, so I'm gonna go buy the pot it would need for when it's a very mature plant. You need to get a pot this big and put this tiny plant in there and there's too much soil around it that's staying wet for too long and it causes the same problem. So make sure you're using appropriate pot size. Now, when it comes to your actual watering, once again, try to dial it in some more. If your underwatering was your problem, try to make sure you're not going as long in between waterings. If overwatering was your problem, try to make sure you're letting it dry out more in between those waterings. And in both situations, one of the things to make sure that the plant is also getting is correct lighting. A lot of times, and this is gonna apply more so to the wet rot situation than the dry rot situation, because actually, the plant being in really good lighting sometimes can cause your plant to dry out even quicker. So that could be not as helpful for a dry rot situation, but the plant still wants to be in good light, you guys. It's just on you to make sure that you're not going too long in between waterings in that situation. But in an overwatering situation leading to what I'm calling wet rot, if the plant is being kept somewhere too dark, and I see this a lot with new plants, you bring a new plant home, it's going through all this shock, and you take it and you've quarantined it for a week in a place that's probably not even that bright anyway because most of us have all our unquarantined plants in bright spots. It's already been kind of a dark situation and let's say you had it in the incorrect soil type, you had it in a pot too big and you go and you put it in a low light situation in a room because it's a low light plan. That's where you, why you bought it. You bought it for that low light situation and then suddenly it starts to decline real quick and you figure out it has root rot. That is probably not only because you put it in a pot that was too big and it was not in the right soil type, but you weren't giving it enough light to be able to use up the water fast enough. So even if we are in the right size pot in the right type of soil, if you have a plant in a dark situation that is too dark for it, and you'll know it's too dark if it's not using its water up quick enough. So for example, this plant, eight days max. It should not take more than eight days for this to dry out. If it's taking three weeks, you probably have it in way too dark of a place because it's not able to use up its water quick enough. So make sure you are putting the plants in a nice bright location. If it is a new plant, I highly recommend, I mean, eventually if you wanna put it in a low light situation, that's fine, but I highly recommend putting it in a bright situation until it's like had a chance to recover and start to push new roots in your home. That may be for up to a month. It just depends on the plant and how quickly it recovers, how quickly it grows. And some plants are just more sensitive than others. That is what I do with my personal plants now. And it has made a world of difference. So those are kind of some of the biggest prevention methods and things that you need to take into consideration in order to make sure that that does not happen again. And once again, also just make sure you're not reusing any soil from a plant that had root rot unless you are sterilizing it first. Now, another thing I wanna to touch on real quick that I don't feel like people talk about a lot is fertilization. Do not go fertilizing your plants right away after anything that's gone wrong with them, you guys. Well, I mean, unless you've determined that something's going wrong with your plant because you were under fertilizing. Obviously in that situation, your remedy is going to be to fertilize the plant. But if something else has happened to your plant, I don't care what it is, root rot, some bacterial infection, some virus, fungal, whatever it may be, I do not recommend like fertilizing your plant when the plant is recovering from something like that because it is in recovery mode. And if it is something that happened to the roots, over fertilization is a thing and plants that have damaged roots can be more sensitive and susceptible to over fertilization and the burn that happens from that. And if you fertilize right away and the roots are more susceptible and that fertilizer causes damage, well, now you've started the cycle again because you've caused damage to the roots. That's gonna let the pathogens that are already naturally there get in and you potentially are gonna have this problem again. Now I say potentially because once again, as I showed you here, there are dead roots in here and I don't have rot. The reason I don't have rot is because I have taken all of those preventative steps. I'm not creating the environment that the pathogens want to be able to thrive, multiply and attack. I'm also not creating the environment that is going to suffocate the roots that are doing well in here. And so if it's not suffocating the roots that are doing well, even though those other roots have died off, they're not being 
caused damage, if you will, like the outer layers not opening up and the inner layer being exposed. And that inner layer is already dead. So that's why it's not a problem. It's just natural decomp in here because I'm taking all of those preventative steps. I really hope that makes sense, you guys. Like in my head, when I was playing this video, it made sense saying it out loud. I'm like, I hope it's not confusing, but if it is just comment down below and let me know and I will try to clarify it more for you. But that is everything I have to share with you guys about root rot. I hope that you have found this video helpful. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below. That will help it to spread to more people who may also benefit from this knowledge. And if you have not seen my video regarding the leaves and things that happens to leaves on your plants and what it can all mean and are thinking that might be super helpful to you, you can check that out next right here. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Aloha.